Uh, so I'm going to be talking about landscape and the dramatic form, I believe, is the topic of our theme today. The word landscape conjures images of nature, majestic mountains, ecstatic skies, a horizon. Theatrical landscapes are the opposite of natural landscapes. They are artificially inseminated environments made by mortals. One of the hardest things to do on stage is to recreate nature. I try to avoid doing so at all costs and have an aversion to fake rocks. I <laughs> tried doing a, a, an Irish play without rocks. It's, it can be very difficult. One of the, uh, nature can upstage scenery. If you are using natural elements, you have to create a world in which the natural and unnatural coexist in a realm that is not real or unreal, but true to itself. Robert Wilson does this by interpreting nature through his highly stylized lens. He makes worlds that feel true according to their own laws. Pina Bausch does this by bringing natural elements indoors and dancing with them. There are few things more cathartic than watching her dancers expend themselves in the rain. For Let the Right One In, a stage adaptation of the film about a boy who falls in love with a vampire, we had scenes that happened inside and outside in quick succession. We wanted the forest to be ever present as both a place of danger and the place of fairy tales where true love saves. But it was also important for the interior scenes to be believable. We used real trees that we obtained sustainably from forest rangers, just want everybody to know that, <laughs> in Scotland, and staged all of the interior scenes amidst them, bringing furniture on and off as needed. The forest was the envelope for all of the locations. A set designer gets to play God and make a landscape from scratch. God made the world by evoking light and separating it from darkness. Other gods use things like mud, human body parts, semen, or a giant's blood. For the stage, landscapes are made with words. Words are the primordial matter of dramatic landscapes. Sometimes the most effective landscapes you will see on stage are ones that take place in an empty space, in the minds of the actors and audience members who co-create reality. In Theater for One, which is a private performance space for one actor and one audience member, actor and audience sit face to face, inches apart. The landscape is created in the intimate valley between them. There is no set, there is sound, there is light, and there is the text. In a mutually interdependent dance, the actor leads, the audience follows, and together they can go anywhere. When someone asks me what I do, I say, I am a scenographer. If I get a blank stare, I say, I create the backgrounds for plays. In actuality, I create the foreground, the middle ground, the sky, and all the laws of physics that the characters exist within. Landscapes in nature exist for years and years. They age, they change, they burn, they grow. They see generations of beings born and buried. A landscape for the stage is tailored by and for one set of beings. It is the result of a unique intersection of artists working on a particular play at a particular time. The same group of artists working on the same play at a different time will make a different world. There are an infinite number of landscapes possible for every play. How do you determine what a landscape will be when you can make it anything you want? How does a space become a place? The extraction of a landscape from a text is an alchemical process in which visible, intellectual, and emotional responses become physicalized. A landscape is not extracted from the stage directions. Most designers I know cross them out. It is distilled from the text itself. Over the course of many readings, I pull out lines and phrases like a forensic scientist. These lines are then distilled into a phrase which guides every choice I make. It is the evidence of the mark the play has made on me. It is the vanishing point in my horizon, and all lines lead to it and from it back into the audience. So for the opera Rigoletto, I worked with the score and the libretto and distilled it several times until I came to these set of phrases. And then I distill it one more time until I'm left with the rain of voluptuous delights to disturb this fat is fatal. 
from there, I, I use that phrase as a sort of, somebody said, um, Jillian, today you talked about tuning your heart. So I use this phrase to tune my heart, and then I go out into the world looking for pictures and images to the library with that phrase in mind. Once I collect those images, I create a collage. I put all of those images together, and then from the collage, I make a model. And from the model, I make the set. For American Idiot, I use the same process. I distilled the lyrics several times until I'm left with the phrase, vocalized electric pulse needs silence expressed. Learn to listen, learn to shout, learn to hear, and not to forget. That phrase becomes this collage. This collage becomes this model. And this model becomes this set. For Spring Awakening, a musical based on the play by Vedekind, again, the same process, distilling the, the whole text numerous times. There's, I'm showing you just a small sample of the work. There's pages and pages until I'm left with, a shadow calling says, a heaven comets on its way to touch me with words of the body wounded and shoot me up with the junk of you. The shadow passed and a blue wind whistled through totally fucked ghosts. Heartache whispered, all is forgiven, the heart will mend, all shall know the wonder of purple summer. And when I work with my students to teach them this, uh, this process, I encourage them to really try to craft something that feels poetic. I, you know, if they make a phrase that is dry and boring, then their work is going to be dry and boring. So I, I would shy away from calling it poetry, but, but the idea is to, to collect as much poetry within the phrase as you can as a departure point for the rest of the work you do. This phrase became a series of collages. And then these collages became this model. Landscapes we see in nature made by the gods move us because of their great beauty, because they are alive and therefore vulnerable to as well as blessed by the elements. To make a space on stage come true, we use the elements of sound and light. Lighting breathes life into a theatrical landscape the way a sunset paints a valley. I can't tell you the number of times I've walked into the theater, seen the set for the first time under work light, panicked, and then the first light cue comes up and I sigh a breath of relief. Which is not to say that sometimes work light isn't the perfect lighting stage for a set, but regardless of what the lighting is, a set needs to be lit to be a landscape. With light, a set becomes a stagescape. And I think the evidence is here. So you see the model without light. While we may play at being gods, a theatrical designer's fundamental role is to be of service, divining landscapes from words. I touch the play and the play touches me. Thank you. <laughs>